As much as I like being away from discomfort in real life, there seems to be an inner lust which fascinates over the idea of pain in fiction. I enjoy seeing these characters face immense hardship, the way they wince at the idea of suffering, their screams they give out from excruciating pain, their tearful tremble from trauma of torment. It's also satisfying. Oh, but of course, I wouldn't want any of this to happen to me. No, I like to spectate these events. I'm told it's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. But to be honest, it's still fun when someone gets hurt, so long as it's not me. In fact, that's where the fun really begins. Isn't it boring when no one at all gets hurt? We head out, kick the ball around, and head back in. Blah. Where's the interest in that? In school, I was taught that all stories have conflict. That's what keeps human hands gripping the pages, with the only time they release the grip being to turn the next page and then gripping it again. I don't think there's any point in telling a story if something exciting doesn't happen. What good is that? So tell me something interesting. Give me a story that has a resonance with this earthly human nature. Lots of times, these conflicts are of war. Oh, the gritty beauty of fake war. It is the adrenaline thrill you get from sports, multiplied tenfold by the realism. I once heard of a paradox. War is peace. And I can see why they say that. We have a hunger for entertainment. And what is more a preference than that of an action-packed fight? Keep us from this, and we'll feel mild as we have no way to keep ourselves amused. It would be the conflict of having no conflict. But don't I feel like these characters are my friends? And if so, shouldn't I sympathize for them when they have these times of immense struggle? My answer? Of course I like these characters. That's another thing that makes the story great. It's not just about the plot, but the characters as well. Skilled writers are masters at making memorable characters that you cheer for when they appear, gasp when they go down, and cheer again when you get back up. Oh, and speaking of getting back up, I should probably explain that as well. Let me remind you that stories are not all gloomy. There are still bright moments, and plenty of them. That's what wraps it up. A satisfying resolution. At the end... There are all those fulfilling scenes. The one where the warriors return home with honored heroism. The ones where the loving man and woman rest in each other's arms. The one where the crew looks ahead to a bright future. Oddly enough, however, I don't know if I could really join them in the happily ever after that follows the last chapter. It may be the best time of the story, but how long will that last? How long... Will it be before I seek another thrill? In school, they taught us about the sequence of a story. Exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. But they left out one part. The hunger for another conflict. This is the part of a story that lies not in literature, but in our nature. That's how it goes. Introduction of a conflict. The rise of drama, the climax, resolution, and then a thirst for more conflict. And so the cycle of conflict and resolution is the yin and yang of storytelling. We don't appreciate our happiness until we risk losing it. And a threat is only scary if there is something beautiful that is in danger of it. I have also noticed that these stories go faster too. They reduce the duration of the mundane by putting boring stuff into a 20 second montage or by removing it altogether. It's less effort too. You only need to watch and listen. Let them convince you that you've earned the satisfaction of being a legend even though you haven't lifted a finger. They cut right to the good stuff, allowing you to get the most out of your reading. Maybe there's something else out there that is above the satisfaction of such a story, but why bother? The entertainment we have keeps us well occupied, and reasonably so. We think there is no way 
to know happiness without annoying suffering. We may not wish harm upon our fellow peers in real life, and we may claim to care for our so-called friends in fiction, but in the back of our minds, we secretly desire catastrophic misfortune to appease our whims for entertainment. So mourn, O widow. Clench your eyes shut, soldier, as you bleed out from your wounds. And the damsel in distress, oh, how you look so adorable when you try to squirm away from the madman who has abducted you. I have no conflict so long as yours is present, and I am sitting back in my chair as a spectator while claiming to be your friend.